So if there is a bone loss, if there is bone loss around an implant, but the implant is still stable, can you add bone graft around an implant, or would you have to removing the implant first is a must? So um, what I've been practicing for 14 years, and so um, the the treatment and this is the bone loss. Anytime you have bone loss around a dental implant, it's what we call periimplantitis. And so, you know, bone loss around a dental implant is just a, it's kind of like the Wild West. And so in my years of practice since 2011, I remember like this doctor named Stuart Fromm up in New York City was lecturing a lot about his periimplantitis protocol. And everybody pretty much had an entire protocol, like a, a different protocol. And what we would say is like, you know, literally everybody was throwing everything but the kitchen sink at, at these, you know, at treatment for periimplantitis. And so costs would get very extensive. Like I, I noticed in some of the treatment plans, it was like, wow, it's like more expensive to treat this periimplantitis than it was even to get this implant in the first place, right? But I could see why, because again, the unpredictable nature and the expense of the materials that are in being involved with the procedure. Um, and also like, if you were to even say pay the same costs as like removing the implant, I mean, to not have to go through a removal of an implant and then bone grafting, and then a placement of an implant, and then the abutment crown in the future, saving all that time and money, I mean, at least the time and the appointments, would you know be worth it in itself. However, the problem with treating periimplantitis is that it is very, um, un again, unpredictable, right? And even using that same protocol is not going to work on everybody because everybody's body is different and how they heal is different. Um, so long story short, over all these years, there hasn't been a standard protocol. Now, I have the Lenap laser. I also have an Erbium YAG laser. And I will tell you personally um, that the best treatment that I feel ha that has been the most promising for me is um, I started noticing at our AAP, so our Academy of Perio conferences um, about five years ago that some doctors out there were using um, the special Erbium YAG laser that was getting awesome results. And like when we would go to these conferences and see some of these results, the results were amazing. Um, so I actually bought one of those about a year and a half ago and I've been using it in my practice and I don't see periimplantitis that often, but in the few times that I have and I've treated it, we've had some really awesome results. So, um, this laser, um, is very promising, but the, the problem also in regards to like how people use this laser, everybody's got different protocols protocols in regards to like, you know, do they use GEM21? Do they use certain biologics? Do they use, what kind of bone are they using? Like, what's your protocol? Are you using any sort of additional chemicals on the implant to treat the implant surface?